All right. Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Teague Lotman. I'm with Inspro and uh, do safety and loss control. And we're just going to do uh, some safety training this morning. And uh, when I talk about safety, all I really am talking about is slowing down and thinking. And as you look at that picture, if it seems like a bad idea, it probably is going to get you or somebody hurt. And OSHA could show up at any time. And these are the programs that they may ask for. So they may walk into your facility and ask you, you know, where the SDS sheets are and what is an SDS sheet. And if you don't know that, that's going to be a $7,500 fine. Or if you're a tech and you're working on a piece of equipment, they ask you what the lockout tagout procedure is. And you don't know that there's another $7,500 fine. So we need to be aware of these programs, not only for our safety, but also to keep us uh, from getting large fines from OSHA. So as we go through this presentation, uh, you'll pick up on that. And if you do have any questions, you can ask your supervisor later and, and they'll be able to help you out. <clears throat> fall protection. All right, hook into your buddy. That's not fall protection, right? That's just a goofy picture. Uh, that's the leading cause of death on the job is falls um, across America. And I know these pictures are outrageous and this is, you know, pretty silly, but I guarantee you everybody has grabbed a ladder that wasn't tall enough and it was not the correct ladder for the job and put themselves at danger. So the first thing I do is I grab the correct ladder for the job. Then I inspect that ladder. Every time I use a ladder, I inspect it to make sure there's no damage to it and it's in good working order and ready to go. Struck by, especially in this industry, that's been a huge issue, people getting run over not paying attention and this is a this isn't a real video but it really demonstrates what can happen out there if you're not paying attention and how fast you can get run over or crushed so when i'm out working around equipment i'm not on my cell phone i'm not looking at paperwork my head is on a swivel at all times and i'm paying attention this is a real uh security camera footage and these guys weren't paying attention the forklift operator was obviously doing some things wrong the guy got run over and crushed and killed Okay, you got to be focused when you're working around mobile equipment. If I have to approach a piece of equipment, how do I approach it? Well, first off, I always come from the front and clear view. Then I make eye contact with that operator and they wave me over and then I come over. Okay, if I try to walk up along the side of a piece of equipment, that's a good way to get crushed. Okay, I always approach from the front, make eye contact, and let the operator wave me over. I see straps that look like this all the time that people are lifting thousands of pounds with. Okay, that strap could fail any time. Okay, if there's any kind of damage on that strap, take it out of service. This just shows putting a different angle on a strap or a clevis, and that puts a totally different amount of force. So um, this just shows that 90 degree angle, I can lift a thousand pounds. And as I make that angle steeper, then I can lift less. Okay. Uh, same way with that clevis. Once I start to put an angle on it, I have to go half the amount of what I could normally lift. So pay attention to those load limits and those angles when you're lifting uh, objects. Mm -hmm. If you get injured on the job, Tell your supervisor immediately, okay? Don't mess around. Even if you think, ah, oh, it's minor, tell your supervisor. Insurance companies do not like late reported work comp claims, and, and they're going to make your life miserable if you don't get that reported on time, okay? So make sure you report it immediately. We get that employee taken care of. We get the paperwork sent in. Then you guys need to sit down together as a group and figure out what the heck went wrong, what caused that injury, and fix it. So it never happens again, okay? Finish up here with some defensive driving. You gotta pay attention out there. This guy was on his cell phone, traffic came to a stop and he killed multiple people, okay? He's going to jail 30 years or better, plus he killed people. Um, when you're in a company vehicle, you're representing the company yourself and everybody else in that company. And you do not wanna make that kind of mistake. Focus, pay attention out there. Got to leave a space cushion, you know, three seconds space cushion the car in front of me. I also have to think about what's behind me. And this car cut across three lanes of traffic and cut right in front of a semi truck and tried to make a U turn. Okay, a truck, semi truck traveling at 55 mile an hour, it takes 
over 420 feet for it to come to a stop. Okay, so you think about the space cushion in front of you, then you got to think about what's behind you also. <clears throat> if I'm in a DOT commercial vehicle, I must have a fire extinguisher. It must be mounted and easily accessible. If I can't get to it immediately, that's going to be a citation. I got to have my spare fuses and my triangles in the vehicle also. I got to have load securement. So before I pull out onto the highway out of the lot, I got to make sure my load's completely secured. Now, obviously, this is a funny picture. You can't secure a load of sand with a strap, right? But when I have a flatbed, I got a picture in my mind. Could I pick that flatbed up and turn it upside down and shake it? Would anything come off? And then that's how I got to think. Because if there's anything that can come off, if you're not secured properly, DOT is going to write you a citation. I want to check my tire ratings to make sure they're rated properly for the load. That's another easy ticket for DOT to write. <clears throat> Anybody that has a CDL, that thing is worth its weight in gold, okay? Don't take the chance and lose it, okay? So if I'm driving my personal vehicle, I blow .08 just like everybody else. Once I jump into commercial vehicle, that drops down to 0 .04. 0 .02, I get put out of service and I get a ticket. That's a beer, okay? Alcohol and commercial vehicles do not mix. If I have a <clears throat> DUI on my personal time and I have a CDL, there is an insurance company gonna let you drive a commercial vehicle for five years. You just ruined your livelihood. Don't take the chance uh, with your CDL and, and goof it up. <clears throat> 